Alright guys, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and uh, real quick before we get into this week's encounter story, first and foremost, all the comments, all of the emails, all of everything that I get from you guys, I just totally appreciate. I wish I had time to get back to every single one of you and publish every single story, but sometimes families get the flu, uh, sometimes we get busy as homeschooling parents, and uh, sometimes I get busy here, there's so many of you, so... But I do want to say this, I totally appreciate every single one of you, and you guys are just great, um, you know, just, just being here. If you want to, you can get on the old free giveaway list. I will announce the winners on the 10th, and this month I've got something awesome from a fan of ours, Donna, who's a little artist, apparently. Donna, um, you're, keeping, you're holding back from us. <laughs> you tell us you're an awesome little artist. She's got a little, little Bigfoot scenery here that she's uh, worked up for us, and... Uh, just want to uh, um, get that out to you. Plus, I got a, a little extra something special for the winner this month. I announced that on the 10th. If you want to sign up, go over to PacWestBigfoot.com, PacWestBigfoot.com, and just click up there where it says uh, Enter to Win. <coughs> Real quick, after I clear my throat, I'm going to... Um, wanted to give a shout out to uh, Sasquatch Coffee Company and also to Fishing Sir, Fishing, S-I-R, Fishing Sir. You can find them over there on Amazon and on Google. Just great, especially for you guys out here who are fly fishing and hoping Bigfoot comes up and steals those. Um, they've got some great uh, uh, fly fishing and regular angling stuff. So I uh, wanted to give them a shout out because I am trying out their stuff tomorrow. It's going to be really awesome. So there you go. <laughs> All right, let's get into the <clears throat> let's get into this week's encounter story. <sighs> nice Sasquatch coffee. That was awesome. Bigfoot haunts a retired couple's property in Central Oregon, just outside of Gilchrist, Oregon. We wanted to build our little log home in the woods. It was a dream of ours for decades, my husband and I. And even though a Bigfoot tried to run us off, we still live here today. I recently heard from a young couple about their family. Well, great-grandparents outside of Lapine, Oregon, who had experiences for years. And it felt comforting to know that my husband and I are not, and we're not, crazy after all that happened. Nothing has happened for years now. About three years for sure, however, it did. And here's what we experienced, Dave, and what we did about it. <coughs> Moving on up to the sky. So retirement for my husband was not going to be outside a giant Pacific Northwest city. Actually, we both wanted peace and quiet in our lives, finally. Between the city and the corporate life we shared a lifetime in, we were ready for wide open spaces. Well, open with trees and mountains as far as the eye could see, at least. At first we opted for living in some higher-end community uh, that was gated and all, but after about seven years there, we were over it. And after one trip to uh, through Lapine, Oregon, and south down Highway 97, well, we were sold on buying some land and building a place our kids and grandkids could share as a getaway eventually. We finally chose a little piece of property outside of Gilchrist, Oregon. It had improvements like electricity, septic system, and everything we needed to put a home on. Actually, it even had everything ready for a f uh, our fifth wheel we could live in for a bit until everything was ready to go. Uh, we decided the idea to live out there for about a year was good. Even in winter, was fine in the old fifth wheeler, so we moved. Yes, winter may have been a little bit more than we bargained for, but it was survivable. The worst thing we faced was our neighbors, which were actually not people, but a family or group of Bigfoot. I know it sounds like I'm off my rocker all of a sudden, and trust me, being the head of a small company for decades, I thought I needed to see a shrink. But it's true. They do exist. Even though it became a little frightening here and there, we never stopped building the dream home out here in which we still live today. We love it here and decided months into the visitations to stay put and stay patient. Anyways, <clears throat> that is how we ended up in the middle of apparently something else's property, not someone's. Breathing outside the window. At first, my husband thought I was nuts. I can't say I blame him, but eventually he came to understand what it was I was hearing and that I was not, in fact, nuts. But it was nearly a month and a half before I noticed anything unusual around the property. No footprints around the area before that. 
nor did we hear any crazy screams, hollers, growls, or breathing outside my window at night, or during the day for that matter. <clears throat> but by the end of June, I believe it was, that, was, that all changed. <clears throat> I heard something make its way up to the trailer window, and then breathing. I remember it was raspy, like whatever it was was either huge or it had a bad case of pneumonia. It was a long day that day and I was still a little restless. I had my reading light on while my husband laid silently next to me, dead to the world asleep. <coughs> whatever it was at that point, and I would come to know soon enough, it seemed to be heavy footed as I heard it walk right up to the window next to me. I was a little nervous thinking a bear or something was right outside my window. I did not wake my husband as I knew a black bear would be no harm, but I was still nervous as all of a sudden I could hear this thing breathing its raspy, and I have to say, smelly breath. I could smell a faint and nasty odor, like onions and vomit, I would say, coming from the less than a foot from my window. I could not see out as it was pitch black outside and we had no outdoor lights at the time. It was gross, so gross I quickly shut the window. The next day I told my husband, but because of the hard, dry ground and rocks we were, um, rocks where we were sitting, no evidence of anything could be seen to have approached the trailer the night before. Whistling and running. <clears throat> it was my husband's turn to get into the weirdness a few weeks later. Of course, since that point, I had heard breathing outside my window at night one other time. Thinking it was a bear, I left the window cracked until I could no longer handle the smell. He decided to survey the land <clears throat> some more, actually. He was going to walk up and across the ridge line that was just beyond our property, but was land on which we could hunt deer in the fall. He said he made, his, uh, he, said he made it there and started walking a small trail he was told about and told me there were game trails galore. He did not notice any deer that day, and he thought the reasons being was that there were some jokesters running around up there at the same time he was meandering uh, near the top. <coughs> it started a few minutes after he hit the trail. He said he kept hearing whistles, short, clear, and sharp whistles to the right and left of the trails as he walked along. He would stop when he heard one, then notice as another would answer. He kept up as he continued on. He was armed with a thirty thirty at the time. Eventually he said he could hear mumbling from the right side of the trail, and all of a sudden he heard someone running on two feet or legs. He thought it was people, weird people, mumbling in the forest and running around whistling. It did not take him long to forget about it, though, after he returned that day. Where's my deer? A couple of months had passed and nothing too out of the ordinary happened and we were getting comfortable with the land around us and the building was going well. It took nearly nine months to get it all done but after Christmas around February the following year we were in our new home. However, it was around early September through November while still in the trailer that things got a little out of hand and scary for a bit. We also came to know what it was that was visiting our property from time to time. My husband is a hunter, has been for a long time. This was the reason he got to know some of the neighbors, and they got to know him for some hunting access between our properties and theirs. That season, he would be hunting the ridge line to the west of our own proper property, the same area where the whistles, voices, <coughs> and running could be heard months before. The first few days out, and he noticed some unusual tracks <coughs> leading back and forth atop the ridge line and back down it. He could not tell too much about them as they were really just impressions in the pine needles and short weeds and grass <clears throat> that grew everywhere, but he could see they were large impressions, however. He also noticed a ton of deer track, so that took over all thought, and so he continued hunting each day for a week. He would bag a four-pointer by the beginning of the second week, and not soon enough as the whistling and voices in the forests started up again here and there two days in a row. As a matter of fact, he would get the deer closer to home as he stopped walking the ridge line due to the creepiness of the vocalizations. They seemed to be clear by then, but were not English at all, more like gibberish. The whistles sounded as if they were meant for communication, and he believed at that point 
they were alerting each other of his position. Eventually, in closer to home, he got his deer, hung it up over night uh, from a tree, far out of reach for anything but him on a tall ladder. We have a ton of coyote, bear, and other predators around here, so he wanted it to be safe just for the night. It was already cold enough to leave it out at that point. The next day, it was gone. And yes, he was really, really, really upset. What was most upsetting after he settled down is what we started to realize and what we found. They had to be all uh, tall. Whomever it was, you could not reach this thing without a ladder and untie it from the height that it hung from. And that were all, <clears throat> and what were all the footprints? It was my husband that noticed them first, but when he grabbed my attention and told me to look down, there was a clear set of footprints in the dusting of the snow that was there. They looked like really large footprints, human ones. After a moment of looking around, my husband started mumbling something else. Bigfoot. I could not believe he said it, but when I looked at his face, I remember how serious it was as he looked down at the ground, walking and looking intently at the tracks. We did not brush off the idea, although it was a little bit of a stretch, I thought personally, but two nights later a face in the window would change all of that for me and my husband. Ugly face in the window. Two nights later, like I said, I decided to stay up late reading. I was a bit restless again with knowing that something like that could exist, not to mention the fact it could be on our property stealing that deer. I got a little worked up, I recall, and needed to get some tea to calm down. I got up, walked over to the kitchen area, and before I could even turn on a light, in the dim light of our trailer's new outside lights we finally in installed finally, I could see a face staring at me. It was liter I was literally eye to eye. It was literally eye to eye with, uh, with me, which put that monster of a thing at nearly eight and a half feet, foot tall. Ugly, like a person and an ape all in one, but really ugly looking. Its face was sort of droopy. The mouth was a slit until it opened it to make a sort of grimace at me seconds later. The nose was smushed a bit, but not like a gorilla or anything. The hair that covered some of its face, head, and shoulders seemed to have a glint of reddish brown in it in the light. It had no real neck, and when it did make that grimace, I noticed no canines, just huge, nasty-looking teeth. It was there and then, <clears throat> it was there and then gone. But as it turned to walk away, it slapped the window of the trailer, waking me from the comatose, fear-like state I was in, and I screamed. My husband was up and out the door with his rifle faster than I had seen him move in a long time, and he used to be a jogger. There was one night, just a few weeks later, <coughs> where I was restless again and woke up because I swear I had heard the jiggling of our door handle to our fifth wheeler. I can't be sure of that one, and it trying to get into our our trailer, but it's what I swear I heard. But that's what happened. <coughs> the unbearable lightness of screaming. Eventually, no more night visits would happen as we installed a couple street style lights around the house. Actually, after the face in the window and the jiggling of a handle, my husband took a couple shots in the direction that thing took off that night. Visitations all but stopped. Screaming from the ridge line, however, continued. They were very god awful sounding, too. It was like demons or banshees gone wild up there for a month. <clears throat> At least every other night or so, a few times a week, you could hear them. My husband did hike out to the base of the hills there and had seen one more, uh, on more than one occasion, sign of them still around. Footprints in the snow, which can get pretty deep here. Once while walking along, uh, he could hear knocks. Well, what we would come to believe were tree knocks. They would repeat in, in sets of threes or fours until he left. It's been about five years now since we moved into our new house here. And no visitors that we know of on our property. They must have moved on when we moved in. In a way, I feel as though we intruded on their property, but also, in the end, there's nothing I can do now. 
I know some would say move, but I love this place and look forward to sharing it with my family for generations to come, Lord willing. It's beautiful here, even with the crazy neighbors. I have to say the Bigfoot was the scariest thing I'd ever seen. Even my husband was hesitant to venture out too far from the house after that for weeks. Never going up in the mountains since, only to the foot of them. But that is our story. Thanks. Reagan.